Can your own phone be used as a weapon against you? Can your mind be controlled with weaponized technology? A top secret control infographic released by accident? A weapon that causes you to hear voices? All of this and more on today's episode of Edge of Wonder. Welcome to Edge of Wonder. I'm your host, Ben. And I'm Rob. And you're probably wondering why we're wearing tinfoil hats. Well, by the end of this episode, you guys, you probably want to be wearing one too. And not because <laughs> we look so fine. So Ben, what was released? All right. Well, for the rest of this episode, why don't we... Uh... <laughs> I kind of want to leave it on. I look like a... Should we just leave it on? I look like a bad version of Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. All right, so recently, Muckrock, a nonprofit news organization that specializes in filing Freedom of Information Act documents, received mysterious papers about mind control, either by accident or on purpose. <laughs> so what are in these documents exactly? Infographics explaining something called psychoelectric weapons. Now you guys might be thinking, psycho what? And what can these weapons actually do? Well, this is where it gets super scary. They can do everything from controlling your dreams, controlling body movements, induce changes to your hearing. I mean, just look at this infographic they received. There's some really crazy stuff written on it about how the human body can be actually manipulated. Right, I know. So there's even sleep prevention, an irresistible sensation to go to a specific place, like you just have to go there, constant itching, induced heart rate. I mean, this thing just goes on and on and on. Yeah, the one that freaks me out the most, though, was the one where they can actually like move your hands intentionally, like the way that they want them. <laughs> yeah. So let's get back to how this was released and what exactly this means. Ben, what I thought was the really interesting thing is that this came out a week after we published our video with cybersecurity expert <laughs> yeah. James Scott, who talked about how this kind of technology actually exists. Mm -hmm. And you guys watch our interview with James Scott if you want to find out more about that. So keep watching if you want to know what this all means. So in our interview with James Scott, he explained how your phones or computers could be turned into a weapon through a frequency that would be sent out, which you can't hear, but it would have a physical effect on the human body. So kind of like if someone has a weaker mind or let's say their mind was compromised somehow, according to what these documents show, it could potentially be controlled or told to do things that they might not otherwise want to do. Right, right, right. So here's where it gets super weird. On these documents, it says that in 1974, Dr. Joseph C. Sharp performed the first successful transmission of a human voice directly in the skull of a person which bypassed the ears. I okay. mean, this is so crazy. like, what? <laughs> like, that happened in 1974, right? right? Yeah. What can they do now? Just wait, because it gets weirder. They tested this stuff on deaf people, and this guy even has a patent for this microwave voice device. So why do they want to do this? Okay, so you're probably wondering, what purpose would a weapon like this have? Or maybe you figured it out because it wouldn't take a genius to. So on the site strategy page, which is all about military affairs, they mentioned that a death ray was replaced by the voice of God during the war in Iraq. <laughs> Okay. So what this means is that instead of using weapons to fight, they use something called a long-range acoustic device, or LRAD. I think, let's go with LRAD. That just sounds cool. LRAD sounds <laughs> way better. It's probably LARD, but okay. let's just go with LRAD. Well, it says that the LRAD is just a focus beam of sound. So, I mean, I could aim this thing at someone from like 300 meters away and they could literally hear the voice, my voice, in their head. So what that means is, if I got control of this thing, I could beam this into Ben's head and force him <laughs> to do something like, buy me some Twinkies. Ben, buy me some Twinkies. <laughs> Okay, so it gets even better. They said that the Navy was using this thing to actually tell ships to move out of the way, and then on the receiving end, these people would become terrified wow. because they would hear this voice. So what Ben is saying is, 
They had the voice of God and they were using it to tell ships to get out of the way. Leave it to the Americans to find such an innovative use of the voice of God. <laughs> so the people were terrified when they yeah, heard it, right? Yeah, I mean, people were just like, what the heck is going, you know, I mean, could you imagine like being in a ship and all of a sudden you're just here, this what, move out of the way. <laughs> like, what the heck? Move out the way. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, hopefully they stopped using it after people were like really freaking out. Yeah, okay, okay, but r a real situation. So imagine this, you're fighting a war and all of a sudden you hear this voice in your head that says it's God telling you to drop your weapons and surrender. I mean, that's... <laughs> I, I'd have a bit of a crisis there myself if I heard that. I mean, seriously, I mean, you can just imagine how much of an effect a weapon like that could have. I mean, weaponizing sound in someone's head, that is ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so like Ben and I like to throw the most crazy things at you guys. So exactly. because ISIS is super religious, it seems like this weapon actually had an effect. Now, why would they do this to the general population? Well, keep watching if you want examples of how they're using this. So the reason they'll do this to the general population is simply for control, really. I mean, these leaked documents show that they can use helicopters, cell phone towers, even commercial vehicles to send out these signals using these psychoelectronic yeah, weapons yeah. to cause all kinds of symptoms. Right. So y'all know there was a real life CIA, CIA mind control experiment going on called MK Ultra, right? It's still going on, but it is like way more sophisticated than when it first started. Right, right. I mean, they don't technically use this name MK no, Ultra. No, technically but, that is, is like, like not, but everyone uses it out of right, the blanket. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, because it's the most well known. But we decided we're not gonna go into this too much because, I mean, man, if we it's did, a whole, it's like a whole episode. Yeah, it'd be like an hour long. So we'll do a whole episode on that sometime in the future, but we wanted to bring it up anyway. Like, you know, I wanna remember Clockwork Orange. It's kind of based out of that. Yeah, so. so Clockwork Orange. Every time I think of Clockwork Orange, I think of that image of the guy with the eye drops. <laughs> yeah. We gotta show that. <laughs> By the way, the book was like way better than the movie. The movie just freaked me out, but MK Ultra was using drugs and uh, psychotropics to control a person and push the boundaries to see what they would do. Right, yeah, yeah. So the person who really made this what it was was Michael Aquino, a military officer and who was a key player in the Church of Satan. I what? mean, yeah, and he's still alive and not being arrested. That's the weird thing. So he used drugs and satanic rituals to control people and he's working with the CIA. <laughs> what, the heck? what hasn't the CIA dipped into? <sighs> yeah. There's even a video of one of the professors he was working with telling a young girl to grab a cobra by the head and then later telling her to put her hand in acid. Yeah, that's not weird. This dude looks like a freaky vampire. Yeah, I mean, seriously, he literally tries to look like a vampire. It's so weird. Now, what would be the purpose of all this? Well, for their personal agendas, for population control, to dumb us down, I mean, et cetera, it just goes on and on. But let's get into some real life examples of this. So we can get in some serious conspiracies here. Everything from the recent shootings, JFK's assassination bombings, etc. But here are some that we found that seem that could really be cases of mind control. Right, right, right. So let's start with Aaron Alexis, the Navy Yard shooter who killed 12 people in DC in 2013. According to an FBI official quoted in CNN, that Alexis was under the belief that he was being controlled or influenced by extremely low frequency electromagnetic waves. So a message later obtained by federal authorities from Alexis' personal computer said, quote, ultra low frequency attack is what I've been subjected to for the last three months. And to be perfectly honest, that is what has driven me to do this. Okay, so wait, let me just say that before we go further, we're not making an excuse for these people. We're just telling you what we found and what these people said. Okay, Ben, right, go ahead. Exactly, exactly. So there's more. Myron May shot and injured three people on the campus of Florida State University in 2014 and was killed by responding officers. So before the event, he had become increasingly anxious that he was under government surveillance and heard voices in his head. Does any of this sound familiar? Yeah, so there's even more. Jason Brian Dalton, an Uber driver, was accused of deadly shooting spree in which six people were killed and two others were injured in Michigan in 2016. He blamed his actions on his Uber mobile app, which uses a symbol that he claims resembles the Order of the Eastern Star, which is part of the Freemasons and the Illuminati. <laughs> yeah. So he claimed it took over his body after he pressed the button of a new app resembling the devil, which caused him to make these crimes. 
Okay, but a smoking gun of seeing this work is when NASA astronaut Heidi Stephanischen Piper was about to say she saw a UFO when she suddenly fell over. Right, right. Oh, so other astronauts came over to help her and you know, they help her get, get back up. She gets back to the podium and then as soon as she starts talking about this UFO encounter, bam, she falls over again and eventually she just carried off the stage. Right, so there's so much more to this, but we're gonna stop here for now. So let's ask who is doing this and why. Right. Okay, so keep watching if you wanna find out what could actually be behind all of this. So if things couldn't get any crazier, I feel like this is the time to bring this up. So a lot of people are talking about, you know, the shadow government and there's so many people in actual government and whistleblowers who are talking about this. I mean, we just interviewed yeah. Laura Eisenhower right, who right. also talks about this. So they have their own agenda, of course, and we just did a video comparing Thanos to the Illuminati, but this is really the main cause, which is population control. Right, they want to control us so they can start their plan to eventually begin their new world order. But to do that, they wanna make sure that no one will be able to stop them. Also, we just interviewed Laura Eisenhower, the right. great granddaughter of President Eisenhower, who actually talks about this as well. So yeah, so the shadow government, I mean, we could get so much into this, who's involved, what's involved, how many people are involved with this. I mean, and what are these doing? They're mostly like suppressing like human consciousness, really. They don't want us to develop into, right. you know? There are actually, some reports say that they're scared of us developing. Yes, right? so. exactly. And, and that's what Laura was actually telling us too. So, but what's starting to happen though is that a lot of people are starting to wake up. More people are realizing that there are things that exist beyond this reality and are starting to see the truth behind all this mainstream narrative that, you know, that they want us to believe. So to make a long story short, a lot of these mind control things are not working the way they planned them to initially. Right, right. So do you wanna know what you can do about it? That's basically what we're gonna cover next. Right. So what can you do about this? Well, for one, you can start to explore self-control methods that will allow you to be more mindful of your own thoughts, such as meditation. So right, so like meditation will help you strengthen your mind and also help you get rid of negative thoughts. Negative thinking invites all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Our recent Laura Eisenhower interview basically goes through this a bit. Have a watch if you haven't. Right, and also meditation can strengthen the pineal gland, which is what is connected to the third eye or the celestial eye. Through that, you'll be able to see wonders beyond anything you thought was true. Comment below if you want us to do a video on everything there is to know about the celestial eye. Or you could just do what we did at the beginning of this episode and start wearing tinfoil hats. <laughs> so like I said, by the end of this video, we may all be wanting I to wear I just can't look hats. cool in this thing, Ben. <laughs> It just doesn't work for me. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> and yours is like the Dude. most stylish tin hat ever. <laughs> your tin hat looks terrible, man. <laughs> and your little thing fell off of it. I know it did, my antenna. Well, in any case, whatever it is you choose to do, I hope this episode has helped you guys. Also, guys, please hit like and subscribe. We're new and we can use all the help we can get. Right. And until then, we'll see you out on the edge of tinfoil. Hey, actually, before we end here, why don't you guys send us your photos about how you look in your tinfoil hats? <laughs> and when you do post your image of the tinfoil hat, make sure you hashtag it tinfoilben <laughs> and hashtag the edge of tinfoil. <laughs> we'll be on the lookout for you guys.